Okay, it just happens to be, I know I say that every week, it happens to be Saturday afternoon, January 25th, 2014. Or 2014. Or otherwise known as 2014. How did the French say, French say January? Jean Vivier. Jean Vivier. Jean Vivier. Jean Vivier. It sounds sophisticated. Well, it is. France is sophisticated. Jean Vivier. It sounds nice. Jean Vivier. They are socialists over there. The 14. Well, they treat their people pretty good. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, but that's what's wrong with socialism. <laughs> you know? The po folk. It's for the people. It's a populist movement. Right. And and these these ignorant. These ignoramus Tea Party boobs keep on confusing. Uh, well, first of all, they demonize socialism and they demonize Karl Marx, but they don't realize that the original socialism and uh, Marx, it, Marxism was corrupted, corrupted by the Soviet Union and turned into a totalitarian uh, regime, right? Yeah, Lord. Right. And, but and Stalin killed like 30 million people. Yeah, well, they well, of course they don't. Uh, they listen to Fox News and they don't research the truth on their own. They're too lazy to research anything. But anyway, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, let, let us introduce ourselves. First of all, this is Progressive Discussions. Uh, welcome to Progressive Discussions. Uh, I am your host, James P. Madonna, coming to you from the uh, newsletter. Um, Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. It is lightly snowing out, a dusting of snow, but it is uh, Jean Vier, you say? Now let me formally yeah, okay. let me formally introduce and pipe aboard my illustrious co-host and mentor uh, for progressive discussions and the founder of Newsletter Censored. William J. Kirk. In 1977, let, let me pipe him aboard our progressive liberal starship censor. And if you want to sing the Star Trek song after I do this, you can do that. I mean the, the, the theme. The theme, yeah. Welcome aboard the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. William J. Kirk. My authentic bosun's whistle from Newport, Rhode Island. Hey, what's going on, man? It got tangled up with my reading glasses. It's all tangled up. That's Beezlebub doing this. I swear, how the hell did it get like that? You know, I have a habit of... I mean, it's not a habit, it just happens to me. Anytime I drop something, instead of going straight down and bouncing off the floor and being in front of me, it ricochets and ends up somewhere beyond the region I'm standing and, and, and in the strangest of places, in any crevice or crack or hole, far from where I was. I, I it never Things never drop straight down and just simply bounce and be within view. Newton's apple went straight down. Well, an apple doesn't really, well, it doesn't fall far from the tree, number one. Ah. Hold on, little levity bells. And I don't think it has that much bounce either. I think it just goes thud. Yeah, it goes <laughs> squash. Then you make uh, apple cider. But anyway, um, yeah, so that's the story. Um, I'm sticking to it. How you doing this week, Dr. Bill? How Very unproductive. How the hell are you? What, what do you mean unproductive? <clears throat> I can't get the time to do what I want to do. Paint? Paint, yes. That's one thing. Uh-huh. And I do not have a bunch of books in front of me to uh, be researching, but I don't seem to be able to get anything done. Well, sometimes you need to... I hate this weather. Sometimes you need to clear the cobwebs and... No, uh, I need to clear this weather. I think it's the winter blues. I, I think the lack of bright, the bright sun... Huh? It's the winter cold. 
you know, you're right about that. Ooh. You're right about that because you already take plenty of vitamin D for uh, to make up for the lack of direct sunlight. Uh, yeah. So it's uh, it's got to be the cold weather, really, because we 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 are ha we're having another polar vortex. Uh. Is it coming next week? It's here. Yeah, well, that's why I was I've been very it's cold. Here. I don't know, it comes just, straight, straight down from the North Pole. Yeah, it's just sweeping down. You know, the, weather, the United States. The weatherman uh, showed that it, it was actually much warmer in Alaska, in Anchorage, Alaska, than it was here. It's been like in the 30s, in, in the mid 30s to about a high of 40, I think, this past week in Alaska. And uh, over here, it's been in the, uh, the teens and the single digits. Well, yeah, I, a couple of days ago, uh, I went on Yahoo and we're about 11 o'clock and it was minus one in Hackensack, New Jersey. Minus one degrees, which is actually much colder than, than Alaska. This weather's, with the climate change, it's really bizarre. Bizarre. Hey, when you hear thunder, thundering in the middle of winter. That alone is bizarre. Thundering Thor! In the winter? Thundering? <clears throat> all right, let me get right to it. First of all, I have some inductees into this week's uh, Mega Life 21 Hall of Shame, our Progressive Discussions Hall of Shame. I want to, before I mention the names, I'm sure there are more, but I want to talk about what they're related to. And that is the online exotic pet industry. Okay? Anything outside of dogs and cats and hamsters and rabbits. Okay. Ferrets. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, ferrets could be... Ferrets, I think, are still exotic. But they're becoming more common. Okay. Um... In this case, it'll be reptiles, as in snakes and lizards and, uh, and arachnids and things of that nature. But there seems to be a pattern with a lot of these companies where the customer service is horrible. They are, when you have a problem, they don't want to hear you. They're very rude to you. They ship you animals that refuse to eat and soon die. And they, uh, they always blame the customer and claim that the animal was perfect when they left our showroom or our warehouse, whatever, showroom. Of course. Automatically, it's the customer's fault, so they show absolute contempt for the customer. And uh, I was talking to someone who uh, left a review um, on a company that's here, <laughs> uh, Florida Herbs, it's called, and they have a website. and. Uh, what happened was Florida Herps took her review verbatim and changed the wording to make to make it look less critical to the company. They actually, you might as well say they censored the person. They censored the person's review experience, which was receiving an animal that did not have sufficient heat packs in the box uh, in the winter uh, uh, 32 33 degrees Fahrenheit outside there was not sufficient heat packs in there for this tropical creature and the creature didn't did not eat and died and the same thing happened to this other person with this company who had purchased the baby veiled chameleon mm. and uh, same thing it was cold not insufficient heat packs, for whatever reason, refused to eat and die. Now, okay, things like that are one thing. I mean, that's one facet of this, receiving an animal that's not 100% and not, and not shipped properly, even though the, the company claims to ship their animals very well. Mm -hmm. The main thing is their attitude towards the customer complaints, customer issues. And there seems to be a pattern here with companies showing this rudeness and contempt for customers when 
they have issues that are not any fault of their own. It seems to be a pattern in America. And um, I've had, me and my brother-in-law have had very similar problems in the past with these companies. Um, some of them don't even get back to you when you have an issue. And um, like Florida Herbs, they just, they just intercept your review and change it around to make themselves look good. But I mean, the attitude of always blaming the customer is not fair. It's censorship. And we are what not- What happens to the customer is always right. You know, ever since the Republicans de deregulated businesses, the customer is not right anymore. It seems like. All they want to do is push product. If you work for them, they want you to work for nearly nothing, with no benefits. Mm -hmm. If you if you're a customer, they want you to just keep on buying and and sh and keep your mouth shut if you're victimized, and all that. Well, let me let me name the inductees for this week's Hall of Shame. Thank you stopped. Number one, shame on you, reptilecity.com. Mm. Shame on you, backwaterreptiles.com. Mm. Shame on you, floridaherps.com. Mm. And a big shame on you to the uh, famous, as seen on the web, as, as seen on YouTube, kenthebugguy.com. You are a douche. Oh my gosh. We're talking about pe the bug guy. people that ignore customer issues, blame the customer. It's always the customer's fault and quite often do not send any restitution. I had a personal run-in with Reptile City. They sent me um, a lizard that was um, wild caught. It was uh, infested with internal parasites and mm. refused to eat and the they the they did not send me one penny for the um, veterinary bills mm. and eventually I had the thing for I had the lizard for a few years it was a blue blue tongue skink from reptile city I had it for a little bit and it was a it was a very gentle docile uh, creature with a personality all its own and it was very friendly and it eventually died what I'm trying to say is they should only sell animals that are healthy captive bred and if not captive bred make sure they are dewormed or de deparasited if, if that is a, a legitimate term make sure and never sell a baby that does not have a fighting chance. In other words, don't sell a newborn pet. You have to keep it a while until it puts on a little weight, a little bit of size, and you know it's eating, you know it's healthy. Then you sell it to a customer and ship it. Are you okay, sir? Mm-hmm. Or are you just relaxing a little bit, right? I'm listening to the skink. Okay, okay. No, so anyway, it's it's... The whole picture is this. Shame on the exotic pet industry. The exotic pet industry also their markup is astronomically highway robbery high. You have breeders of of uh, reptiles that are known to lay a ton of eggs like mm. bearded dragons, African chameleons, crested geckos and then they turn around and they sell these animals for a high price p piece. Hey, I thought supply and demand was a big part of capitalism. Ah. If the supply is very high, and even if the demand is high, with the high supply, doesn't that usually keep the price under control? Well, you uh, you want the business to have low prices? Well, if, if the, the, like... They only right. advertise low prices. They don't have them. No, I, I, what I mean is if your supply is very high volume. Yeah, but that's supply. not how capitalism is operated today. It's unethical. Yes, it is. <clears throat> capitalism itself is flawed. Flawed. Okay? 
It is not for the populace. Especially since it is for those who have the haves. That's correct. That's why the uh, the trickle down never worked. Wasn't meant to work. Everything siphons up. Now, um, if it was capitalism under a progressive or a democratic control with regulations, that's another story. You no, know, then, it's not. It's the same story. Well, jobs was well, a democrat. Capitalism has to go. It's just the same as the political system and etc. The systems have to change. Yeah. What if you keep the jobs in the United States under capitalism? Well, that's not the, that's not a capitalist thing, the jobs per se. That's a private sector decision allowed by your government. You allowed. You put the regulations in that allow this. What about the offshore mailboxes and offshore? You have the regulations in effect that allow this. So the offshore, the Swiss bank accounts, the offshore mailboxes, hiding the profits, uh, uh, outsourcing not tariffing them when they bring the products back into the United States. Yeah. All this is allowed, is what you're saying. That's good. Okay. Why is it allowed? Because of the corporations and the wealthy own the government. Plutocracy! I just posted that definition. Where, where, when the wealthy control the country. And when corporations marry the government. It's called fascism. You hear that, Tea Party idiots? It's not a uh, commie, pinko, socialist, communist, fascist. They're always throwing yes. fascists. They always confuse totalitarianism with those two things, communism and socialism. Right. They are devoid of that. Okay. Totalitarian, you know, is its own disease. Are you, are you ready to hear something not only infuriating Ooh. and absolutely ridiculous and upsetting, but also very funny at the same time. Uh. Hold on to your desk. Here it comes. My last spiel here before we uh, sink our teeth into these readings. Uh, Susan Atanus. I think she should change her last name to Anus. Oh, Suzanne Anus. Goodness. Suzanne Atanus, capital A T A N U S. Okay. Okay. Republican candidate for Congress in, oh, Il God. in Illinois. <coughs> Republican candidate for Congress in the state of Illinois stated that autism and dementia are God's punishment for abortion. And the AIDS uh, uh, epidemic. Uh, epidemic, if you want to call it that, is punishment for same-sex activity. Tornadoes and other natural disasters are also punishment for gay rights and abortion. Homosexuality will weaken our military. So, I didn't know Suzanne Atanas had a bat phone to God. I didn't know that she <laughs> obviously has not read the Bible because the Bible's very clearly makes it very clear that there is no judgment now except for the elect. Those who have been called yeah. and qualified. Well, you're talking about people who know the Bible, not only thump it, they know it. I don't think the right-wingers know it at all. No, so, But it seems like these um, zealot right-wing evangelical or fundamentalist, whatever you want to call them, religious nuts, of the Republican persuasion. It seems like they all act like they know what, what's on God's mind. They know how God thinks. They have a bat phone and a stovepipe to God. And guess what? People believe them. Uh, and yeah. And they don't question them. Yeah. And if you question any kind of religion, it, and, and especially Christian, or so-called Christian, you are the problem, not what they say. You know, the other day, uh, Elizabeth Hassel Dooch, Hasselbeck, Hassel bitch, yeah. Hassel fuck, Hasselbeck, was ranting and carrying on about uh, tr the uh, traditional roles for men and women are gone and men are wussies 
men are not real men anymore, blah, 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 blah. Traditional roles, does that mean uh, that if a girl, a young girl wa wants to uh, train or study for a career that is yeah. not traditional? She should be in the kitchen barefoot and pregnant. That's the role of the woman. And she must be subject to her husband. Wow. Okay? That is a role of women. And you should never speak up in church. Really? Never. Doesn't that kind of like go way backwards in time? Yeah. Hello? Everything that was fought for, uh, for women's rights, were be abolished. Yeah. Well, what they're trying to abolish abortion. Legalize abortion in the United States. State by state. Well, because they think that all this is biblical. They think that uh, a fertilized egg or a fetus that breathes like a fish, is that it or is it an embryo? Embryo that breathes like a fish. An embryo that breathes like a fish. Is human embryo. Because life begins at conception. When the little spermatozoon it penetrates the ovum. That's when life begins. The Bible says life begins when the first breath is taken. But anyway, uh, yeah, they, they have a bad phone to God. Yes, they all know exactly what God's thinking and they are they um, take it upon themselves to be judge and jury and uh, you know uh, and say that everything that happens to you is punishment therefore us Republicans are not going to send any aid any help so excuses 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 like Pat Robertson for not being a good Christian well, I'm sure Pat Robertson uh, calling the people of Haiti uh, mm -hmm. saying the earthquake punished them for their voodoo practices. I'm sure that's a Republican excuse for not sending help. Of course, it's all it's all around that crap. And I want to make a statement. I did it on the uh, Progressive Discussions Facebook group. I would like to say I am now very happy with mm -hmm. my Obamacare. Happy, happy, happy. I, I know I um, I had some issues with uh, the state. St I still have some issues with the, uh, the state um, hotline and that you can call and the, and the government website. Well, the, it's connected with Horizon of New Jersey, New Jersey Family care the state agency in Trenton that is uh, overseeing the Obamacare for New Jersey and uh, thank God Chris Christie didn't try to spike Barack Obama and he allowed Obamacare to enter New Jersey maybe because Obama helped him out to a certain extent with Sandy that could be it other states are still not allowing Obamacare to enter their states out of spite work. But everybody I know is very happy with their health coverage under Obamacare with zero co-payment. Mm -hmm. And so far about 3 million people have signed up. Of the 30 million supposedly without insurance. What's the ratio of happy to uh, dissatisfied? As a good, as a favorite. Well, if the, if the right wing, the Fox News and etc., have to find people to lie about their dissatisfaction, it seems to me that there's more satisfaction going on than dissatisfaction. Oh, like that, that guy during the election, what was his name? Bill the Plumber, Dan the Plumber? Uh, what's my That the idiot. Yeah. The Tea Party guy. But they have to find people that they that are not really dissatisfied. They lie. So, you know, I'm sure if there were really dissatisfied people, they could find them. If you don't have health care and you go from not having health care and and can't, can't, not able to get health care 
and all of a sudden you have complete health care with zero copayment, I would say your, your standard of living, your quality of life has just went up, went up quite a bit, has just risen oh, quite a bit. Don't ever mention that to the right wingers, they don't like the quality of life to go up for the populace. I guess they want people yeah. to get sick and drop dead. Well, yeah, in a way, because, uh, you know, we are uh, using up their resources. They want to call the herd, yeah. yeah. Their resources. Yeah. The elite is just like the... Nestle owns the water, no? Just like the... Monsanto owns the seeds, no? Just like the CEO of Nestle says that uh, uh, us people, uh, mainstream, does not have a right to drinking water. After billions of years of living things drinking water for free on Earth, CEO comes along in the 21st century and claims that we don't have a right to our water. Hey, it worked with the Indians, no? Well, the smallpox, I think, was a form of genocide for indigenous people. Yeah, but I mean when the, the people were stealing the land from the Indians, like William Penn and et cetera. Oh, they all yeah, stole. Yeah, they worked then, right? And the, and the European colonists stole from the Aborigines. The they have a, a holiday called Australia Day, and the Aborigines are, are cursing and yelling, mm -hmm. saying that we have no reason to celebrate Australia Day because of the uh, genocide that was perpetrated by the British and plus stealing their land and now they want to steal their uh, sacred grounds, uh -huh. Aboriginal uh -huh. land, for profit of course. Of course. And I guess what? Fracking goes on in Indonesia. I didn't know that. Hey, wherever they can do it, they're doing it. And they're doing it here too. And destruction of the rainforest is going on in Indonesia also. They're doing also. it in the U.S. Okay? And I heard a little blurb yesterday about the Keystone Pipeline. Oh, yeah. And that it's in use. Really? So it seems to me that uh, that thingy is already in the bag. Not good. Yeah. Not good. Okay, let us sink our teeth into these readings for this week's rest of discussions. And then, after uh, Reverend Bill's uh, lunch break, we will be back with William H. Morrill III. All right, okay, start. I do not claim to know what Governor Christie of New Jersey knew about the George Washington Bridge fiasco. Bridgegate, yeah. Nor when he knew it, although I suppose my tax dollars will be spent to find out. Well, there's spite work that he allegedly uh, caused, did, against uh, the city of Hoboken, New Jersey. And then there's an even bigger alleged scandal of stealing or withholding Storm Sandy funds, making it disappear to Hoboken. To Hoboken and also in general, I hear, missing Sandy funds. Uh, and of course, the Sandy funds, the 25 million, that were used for the commercial and the storm. You mean with the beached whale standing on the beach with other New Jerseyans saying, we're stronger than the storm. All I know is that 25 million could have been used to reinstate the property tax rebates in New Jersey for the elderly and the disabled. That's right. And guess what, Christy? Chris Christy, you're not stronger than Mother Nature. You are not stronger than the storm. And every time somebody claims that the, the homes are up to hurricane code and that we're ready for the next storm, a stronger storm comes along and proves them wrong. Back to the reading. So I guess I am giving him the benefit of the doubt. However, I sincerely question the statement that Christie has brought dignity to the office of governor 
when he was elected in a state that is largely democratic. I am not sure that one's political affiliations have anything to do with dignity. But I know that Christie has often acted in an undignified way as governor. Well, yeah, it's a bully. It is a demonstration of bad manners to call others stupid or numbnuts or to say, take a back to another. Oh, so if you're, uh, if you're a victim and you're low income or, or let's say uh, your job is on the line, like let's say you're a teacher or just a, a, poor, a poor person in New Jersey, and you don't agree with Chris Christie, he calls your names. You're stupid. So you're just I'm supposed to be a victim and just lie there and just cease to exist. But it's all your fault. Because everything is your fault. That's correct. Like I was told, like my uncle used to, used to say, it's your fault that you didn't get hooked up with a big blue chip company when you were, when you left school, when you were 18 years old. That is not telling it like it is, as the governor has suggested. I want my leaders to always act in a dignified manner. And I am appalled that the governor of New Jersey behaves in such an undignified way. Christie has not represented the state in a dignified manner from day one. Wow. Okay. He hasn't, he hasn't, he hasn't done that at all little photo op I did before. Oh boy, oh boy. Speaking of photo ops, I saw a, a photo of Sarah Palin holding up a big chubby Chinese baby. Yeah, that was on that thing last night, which I commented on, on Facebook. They love them photo ops, the Republicans. Hey, oh, politicians. A 20-year-old Indian woman said she was gang raped. From India, yeah. On the orders of the village council because she fell in love with a man from a different ethnic group. Interracial dating? Twelve suspects and the head of the council had been arrested in the Monday night attack, police say. So I, I guess women in these countries uh, are not supposed to have any, any rights or equal rights. I guess that's what Republicans want. The woman told police that she lost count of how many men raped her. Oh gosh, holy shit. And, and, and the police actually helped her? The police were not there at that time. She was hospitalized on Thursday in very serious condition. What about witnesses? Any, any, well, read on. TV news reports said the woman is a member of an ethnic tribal group and the man is a Muslim from a neighboring village. That's true. India does have different cultures and religions within that country, yeah. The man visited the woman's village, Subhopur, on Monday to propose marriage, but was caught by other villagers, and the man and woman were tied to a tree while the village council decided their fate. Police officials said the village council ordered the man and woman to pay fine of four hundred dollars. The man's family was uh, able to pay, but when the woman's family said they were too poor, the council ordered the gang rape. <coughs> Police said. Lovely. See what happens if you're poor? Lovely. Hey, you get raped if you're poor. Yeah, well, okay. if you if you poor, uh, you um, you get the shit end of the stick pretty uh -huh. much. If you're rich, you get off scot free. 
Yeah, I believe that was on Facebook the other day, wasn't it? Yeah, the one the one percent man gentleman, I use that term loosely, yeah. got away with what he did and the uh the poor African American gentleman uh, they threw away the key because he he took a television? Something like that? Yeah, hundred and twenty dollar television or hundred and forty dollar television. And they yeah. practically threw away the key. And your friend over there said, I don't believe that. Oh, is that was that Mr. Dunn? I don't know who it was, but I, I told him, I said, well, I, I said, uh, oh yeah, well, I guess you don't believe about, uh, uh, you know, uh, three strikes kiting, and you're out. kiting three checks and uh, for life, uh, you know, three strikes and you're you out. You know, that comp, uh, uh, he has been making, I, th I, I think it, it might be him, he has been making um, some right-wing statements, uh, but then sometimes he... <laughs> agrees with us progressives but he always uh seems to be defending the elitists and the corporation hey. so if he keeps up he might be the next inductee into the right-wing troll uh family of uh, award winners <laughs> okay old rivers can indeed learn new tricks excuse me old rovers Rolling into its 10th anniversary on the red planet Mars. Yeah, and it actually was a little warmer on Mars than it was in our area. That's another amazing thing they showed on the news. Opportunity has discovered clay minerals showing that life-friendly water flowed on Mars in the earliest epoch of its history. Wow. Uh, no doubt. I mean, you know, hey, Mars has poles. They have polar ice caps. Do they have Czechoslovakians too? You mean check off from Ring Star Trek? Ring the bell. Check off from uh, Star Trek? Poles. Oh, Czechoslovakians. Oh, poles and poles and poles. <laughs> hey, my uh, high ORAC antioxidant ber uh, berry tea is from Poland. And there's no cheap filler in it. Like American tea, they use uh, rose hips as a filler. Ooh. Not European teas. The findings indicate that uh, Curiosity's groundbreaking discovery last year of clays capable of hosting microbes like those on Earth was no fluke. We've basically found strong evidence for clays on both sides of the planet. You know, if you want a higher price, you call it terracotta, not clay. Opportunity has seen better days since it landed on Mars, January 24, 2004. It has a bad front wheel. Its robotic arm is suffering from mechanical arthritis, and it has even had a senior moment. <laughs> He's got Alzheimer's for crying out Poor seniors. Damn. Senior moment. They assume that every senior is like shot to hell, huh? With its flash memory. Mars Exploration Rover Project Manager John Callis said. Charlie Callis? Yeah. John Callis. But opportunity is far from done with Mars. Its discovery of water. That's not too acidic to support life shows that it has a lot more exploring to do as it heads into its second decade. This creates some of the most scientifically interesting opportunities of the mission. When opportunity and its now defunct twin spirit landed on Mars, they probed, what, the two of them landed and I guess one is defunct? Something. They probed the planet for evidence of water in the past. They found mineral and chemical signs of the liquid's past existence in the Miridani Planum area, including spherules, blueberry-shaped concretions of the mineral hematite which are thought to have formed in running water. Hematite is, um, I believe, is uh, iron pyrite. I could be wrong, but it is... An it, iron pyrite? 
Arr. No, it's a very uh, pretty, uh, uh, non-precious stone or semi-precious right. stone. But uh, f finish up this reading. Uh, but many of those chemical clues uh, came in the form of sulfate, a sign of highly acidic water that would not have been able to support life as we know it. Since Opportunity's arrival at the rim of uh, Endeavor Crater in 2011, the picture has changed dramatically. The rover has discovered signs of clay minerals that form in the presence of low acidity, mm -hmm. pH neutral water. Mm -hmm. The clay rich rocks are geographically close to the sulfate rich rocks, but they were vastly separated by time. The clays came from a much deeper layer of rock that represented the earliest epoch in Martian history. Over the past few winters, local birders, speaking of animals, who venture into the forest of the Teaneck, New Jersey Creek Conservancy have been treated to a site that has grown rare and could soon be a distant memory, a clutch of rusty blackbirds feeding among fallen leaves. New Jersey is at the far northern edge of the rusty blackbird wintering range, that, but that isn't what makes it unusual to see this local flock. Rusty blackbirds, once ubiquitous, have suffered a precipitous decline in population over the past 40 years in North America. The population has declined by as much as 90 percent, and researchers are just starting to figure out how it happened. This bird is in a crash. A conservation biologist with the Vermont Center for Echo Studies, an international coordinator of an effort to gather more information about the species, estimates the rusty blackbird's remaining population range from 2 million to maybe only 160,000. And there's probably not one smoking gun. There are a combination of factors at work. But we don't really know yet, because they are really difficult to study. We're still in the phase of trying to figure out who this bird is. Scientists know relatively little about this once common species, because its summer breeding grounds, forests, stretching from north, northern Eng New England up into Canada and West Alaska are often remote and difficult to reach. Though still, in the early stages of their research, those studying the birds have several ideas about what happened. for the birds to me. Uh -huh. <clears throat> but how about the bees? Bees are in trouble. So are the birds. Same thing. Yeah, but if the bees perish, we have, the world has about enough food for, I think, four years. Something, something like that. If there's no pollination. <clears throat> Serious stuff, you know. Thanks to companies like Monsanto and their pesticides. Who are trying to feed the world. Oh yeah, they're trying to no. control the world's food supply, not feed the world. Uh -huh. Now, you know what, sometimes I think an asteroid would do this planet good. Why do you want to kill everybody? Because they suck, that's why. What about the good people, the populace in this country? 
They suck. They try to fuck my Who show. Who want to change them? All right. All right. Huh? Well, you know, there's always the good and innocent always end up collaterally, uh, collateral damage, suffering for the, uh, the ills of the wicked. That's because we give too much power to those who are wicked. That's true. What is that, uh, what did uh, Felix Unger say on, on the art couple? He recited Shakespeare. Fault lie, it does not lie in our stars, it lies in ourselves. That was Brutus. Brutus said that? In Julius Caesar. Uh-huh. Yeah. We got, Brutus. We got, we got Brutus. time for Brutus. Uh, Brutus. one reading before your lunch, right? No. Or is it that time already, 3, 3 p.m.? Look at the clock, man. Is it 3 p.m.? Got a couple of minutes, that's it. Oh, so... Did I have something so small? Steve actually. I ate, have ate, something small here. Steve actually ate up that much time. Son of a bitch. No, he was. He did a very good. Uh, uh, what's shtick. the word I'm looking for? He did service. He did to mankind. He did a very good service. Yeah, he did good. Good service. All right. Japanese fishermen have finished killing about forty dolphins targeted for their meat as part of a larger group trapped recently in what activists say was the biggest roundup they have witnessed in the last four annual hunts. You mean to tell me this happened again this year? Did you not see? And, yeah, but they... This they, is a big issue, but they, man. But they report it every year and the Japanese are still doing it? And the United Nations don't come down on them? No. The little cove was bloody. The waters were bloody. They just, I hate to say it, but in Asia, anything that moves seems to be food to them. I mean, you know, the, uh, the freshwater pink dolphin of the Yangtze River, I hear, is extinct. I'm sure it's because they killed the friggin' dolphins for food. Oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, but I, Why do they get away with it year after the massacre? Uh, year after year after year. Isn't part of this uh, spectacle about ego? It's a massacre. Isn't it about ego where they, the Japanese go in there and yeah. they kill a dolphin? Oh, or what about this, these exotic. Uh, Backstreet uh, sushi restaurants in Tokyo, where they 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 take a live animal, let's say a frog, and they introduce it to you, and the frog's looking you straight in the eye, and he's alive, you know, like a bullfrog, and they they kill him and skin him alive. They skin him alive. Sounds like Duck Dynasty. They skin him alive, and and, and they, they they serve you parts of the frog that that's still moving, and they think it's so macho. Yeah, I saw this on. Uh, Anthony Bourdain's uh, No Reservations, I believe, or, or no, it could have been Andrew Zimmer's uh, Bizarre Foods, I think that, I think both of them were there, but I think it was either or or both. You know, I mean, making an, an animal suffer when there's other things to eat. There are plenty of other things to eat where you don't have to do something so outrageously cruel. Sea Shepherd best known for its anti-whaling activities, said that of roughly 250 captured dolphins, 52 were kept alive for sale to aquariums and other customers, one accidentally drowned, 40 were killed, and the others were released. So it was done for business purposes. The annual hunt received high-profile criticism when United States Ambassador to Japan, Carolyn Kennedy, tweeted that she was deeply concerned about the practice. That's all she said? She's deeply concerned about the practice and she had to tweet it? She should have gotten in front of the national media and well, screamed. It was reported in the national media. The fishermen oh, say yeah, yeah. the hunt is part of their tradition. It's despicable. They are highly intelligent mammals being slaughtered. And the call for foreign critics 
who eat other kinds of meat, hypocritical. Who eat other kinds of meat, hypocritical. Well, a dolphin is, first of all, I believe a dolphin is much higher on the evolutionary chain, intelligent-wise, as let's say cattle. Or, but then again, I've been around cannibals. goats that were very affectionate and very friendly. What about cannibals? And they kill goats, huh? Cannibals. Well, cannibalism, they usually uh, roasted and ate their enemies during well, wartime. They were still human beings, during supposedly war. higher on the evolutionary scale. Well, you know what? I'm all for um, the death penalty for heinous crimes. You feel sorry for those humans? Not me. Not well, it's me. not a matter of feeling sorry. It's a matter of thou shalt not kill. Tell that to and them. And especially the state. Tell that to them. Shall not kill. Tell that to them when they murdered some little kid, kidnapped a little I'm child, sure ra somebody, raped her and killed her. Exactly, Tell but somebody told them that. Told them what? register. Thou shall not kill. So they're but that's so, not the point. So they're sociopaths. So, the point so, is so the state. So the victim should not get restitution, is what you're saying. Restitution. In the Bible, if somebody kills somebody, accidentally or <coughs> deliberately, they, they had safe cities where they run to, where they won't be pestered. Because in those days, the family went after them or whatever. Well, that's good. You the know. family was like Charles Bronson, a uh, death wish. Yes, but <laughs> again, you're giving the. Uh, we're, we're off the subject. The subject is should the state have the power? Okay. Oh, the That's state. That's the point. State's usually directly involved with law enforcement. I mean. Uh, well, then, shall the, should the states have the power to execute criminals? Do you want to give them that power, which many of them have already? Well, I don't want to see innocent people ah! incarcerated or, or, or put to death. Ah, but many have been. I thought you're supposed to be convicted without, without a shadow of a doubt. Oh, that doesn't happen. Well, then you're convicted very much with no shadows of a doubt so when a, you're poor. So that's like a kangaroo court. So if you're poor... You have no stinking rights. You have no justice. There is no justice if you have to pay for it. In other words, if you want to take a you want to take a case to the Supreme Court of the United States, it costs you money, pal. Plus a lawyer. Hey, when or I, a few lawyers. When I was in the meat cutters union many years ago, Damn. they said that uh, that uh, full timers had. Um, number one priority far above part-timers as far as uh, coming to the defense and I thought that sounded unfair and then I realized you know I mean they both pay dues but I realized that the full-timer they they collect higher dues but still still you shouldn't say that you know one member because of their, they're an, at a higher socio-economic ladder or at a higher level Deserves more priority than the, the, the. But we do that all the time. The low low person on the totem pole. We do that all the time. Yeah, you're in. You're you're. Uh, in there's more respect. There's more whatever you, for the rich. Yeah. And the powerful corporation for and, and that, uh, uh, and, an individual. And that involves uh, the judicial system. Yeah. You know, but there's no justice if you have to pay for it. No, I and and you know what? Speaking of pay for it. I don't think uh, a good education and good health care should be a privilege. I think it should be a right, and I don't think people should have to pay for it. Gee, that's what France and Germany believe, too. If you're a poor kid in, 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 in the inner city, let's say you're living in the ghetto, but and your child has a ghetto. super... Yeah, in the ghetto. That's what Elvis Presley, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. And I you used to get paid for singing, and, as a rule. And your child has a super high IQ. It don't matter with IQ. No. Why you put this all the I'm time? I'm talking about God-given talent. No, People, no, 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 no. A fair you society. Fair, you, what, you don't believe in a fair society? That's not fair when you're giving the, the, the whatchamacallit, to those who already have. Why should a numbskull go to college for free? Why shouldn't he? Because he's a numbskull. I know, but a numbskull can improve himself to not be a numbskull, can he? 
Well, it, but he won't get is, that chance under you. I am not even focusing on the on the numbskulls. Yes, you are. It, you just said that someone with a high IQ. No, what I'm saying is, because I didn't finish the story. Oh. Okay, under that system, a numbskull or a nincompoop, if you want to use those words, has the right to get a free education. Thank you. And if they get if they get through, if they manage to get through grammar school and high school, mm -hmm. they ha they're entitled to a higher education and going to, let's say, going for an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree, if they can. And, and if they can't, they have a right to keep on going to school for the rest of their life until they get their degree. They have that right. But I'm not focusing on the income poops of life. I'm focusing on... Like the, the income poops of life are the poor. The unfairness of yeah, I'm talking about poor people. No, no, you're you're not being. It fair. is possible for you're not being fair. it is possible for a poor kid to be naturally highly intelligent and gifted. He don't have to be. Sure. That's what we use schools for. No, what some the people. Hell you think some we people. Use schools sometimes for? you got to be born with with your talents, my friend. Oh my God! You know how some people are. Nobody's very, born with anything. Yeah, yeah. You you believe? Oh, you could teach. Oh, could you teach an artist that doesn't know anything about art? No. Bob Ross you, has been doing it for years. You have to be a natural artist. Bob Ross has been what, doing what, it for years. What about kids go to Juilliard that are that are brilliant violinists? Why do they want to go to Juilliard? You think the average kid that wants that likes Maybe the violin? Maybe he wants to fix cars. You think the average kid that knows how to violin Maybe he wants could be an Isaac Perlman? No, I don't think so. That takes practice, practice, see, practice. You see, you think that that These things don't come everybody to you. is equal in all ways. Not in all ways. They're no, I just said it. To become an Isaac Perlman takes <laughs> practice, practice, practice. Isaac that Perlman takes time, has, time, has time. A, a, devotion, devotion, devotion. The reason why Isaac Perlman is Isaac Perlman Jesus. is because he was born with a natural. No, he wasn't. God given. He never it, picked up the violin until later in his life. What are you talking? A violin is a skill. It's not something you're so born with. So what you're with. trying to say is all his. Charlie it Daniels skill. doing it. Charlie Daniels doing the devil come down to Georgia. They skill. They learned that? That's correct. There's no God given talent? No. Uh, look. We are born with I'm more moderate. Place. He's more liberal than me. And it's nothing to do with liberal or moderate. Well, you you feel that you, you gotta pour your heart out you're bringing to right, everybody. You're bringing right wing crap into this. It's not right wing crap. It is crap. so. You are you are you are judging these people better. High IQs. These people here, poor, I just got populist. Done. I, uh, I, 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 I just got done saying that the kid in the ghetto might have might have a genius IQ. I just got done saying that. It doesn't take in a genius IQ to best oneself in life. I know, but a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Yeah, that's why you got educated and give it skills. And you ever see a kid that draws the cartoon character to win the award to get into art school? Oh, you ever see that commercial? Well, you know, some kids can... I did it! Some kids can draw that cartoon character. Who cares? Exactly. Who cares? I care because they have a natural born talent. No, they don't. Yes, they do. They're superior they in it. art. They're superior in art. They learned it. And they're not superior uh, if they're just going to school. Listen, How can they be superior? If, if they I, haven't learned if, if, it yet. If I'm a kid and I'm a natural mathematics genius and I can count cards in a casino, I have superiority over the other that kids. That is something entirely different. It's it's a God-given talent. What, what about yeah? But what about the 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 idiot savants, huh? Who maybe have this something in one area or something, oh, and like, they're dopes in oh, the other. Oh, like Rain Man. Yeah, like Rain Man. That's very possible. Yeah. That's very possible. But that's not the problem. The problem is you are writing off these people I'm not on the lower sections I'm of I'm not life. begrudging them and saying they can't go to school for free. I'm just saying I feel they're, they're nincompoops. That's all. No, all right. you're saying that you <laughs> want to give... You want to give things to only those who are qualified. Well, I want to get behind those natural talents. Qualified. There those, are none. Those... There are no natural talents. Then how come all the people that, um, uh, what's his name, Ian, Ian Grinier teaches oil painting in his class that only a tiny percentage 
are destined to excel in oil painting Correct. on canvas. And only a small percentage are going to excel at anything. That's what the, that's We have what, a world of nincompoops. That's what the martial arts guy told me. There is no average martial well, arts Well, then why student. don't you believe that? In your philosophy. I just said that before. No, you didn't. Your philosophy is for the high IQs. I'm saying, I'm saying that. Or you know, for the rich. You don't have to be a kid from the middle class or wealthy family to You can justify to succeed. all you want. You, people should back up talent, no, regardless how Forget poor. Forget the, the talent. There is no talent. There's no talent. He thinks everything is learned. Uh. Sometimes you just got to have it. Anyway, time for break lunch for Dr. Bill and I will be back with William H. Moore of the third and then be back again for the readings. Okay, we are here. I'm here with William H. Moore of the Third. Now, Bill, what's been happening? I want to make a comment about Obamacare. Um, of course, I received the letter, like multitudes of other Americans, about choosing an HMO. They want you to choose an HMO, which is part of Obamacare. And uh, I chose Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield because the hospital, the medical center I deal with, only takes Horizon. They do not take United Healthcare or any other insurance. So I chose it and uh, I called them and they said, okay, everything's fine. Mr. Madonna, you're, you're on Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, okay? So what happened was I get a letter this week stating that my Horizon account is going to expire on the 30th of January of this year, 2014. I go, wait a minute. Why? They're saying that they're going to switch me to something else because I chose something else. I go, wait a minute. I chose Horizon. I didn't choose anything else. So I'm trying to call the state, uh, the, um, in, the inbound call center that selects your HMO for Obamacare. Every time I call them and I log in my account number, and uh, give them the inf information. It, it says we cannot, we cannot process your call at this time. Call another time, and they and they disconnect me. I I, I log. No, first I log in the account number. It says the account number is wrong. I log it in several times. Right. I do it slowly, slowly. Finally, it kicks in. Then it ex accepts my account number. Then it disconnects me. So this happened over and over and it's over. It's probably intentional to discourage people. That's what I was thinking. I doubt if it's a malfunction, personally. That's my opinion. I might be wrong. How could it be? How could it be? How could it not be a malfunction when I signed up for the HMO? But it is a malfunction now. I can't get a hold of anybody. Did you ever think of maybe? Maybe more people should call your congressman or representative or your local. Um, Oh shoot, what's the term of your local representative? Call them and complain. I called Horizon. Horizon well, Horizon told me I have to call the uh, the agency that runs New Jersey for Hor Horizon New now, Jersey. What there? That's that's the office that keeps on disconnecting then me. I would contact your assemblyman, your congressman, your senator, yeah. and explain or email. Right. Say what can I do if they keep doing disconnecting me, whatever. Is this a game they are playing? Because I need to have Horizon. Then why don't you contact them? It's very frustrating Jimmy, and I illogical. Your why aren't you contacting, contacting who? Your senator, your assemblyman, your I don't know if they, because I can't directly contact them. Yes, you can. By email, you can. But but I get a general answer back. Well, you're going to have to do something. I don't get a personal answer back. You're not getting back. any answer when you're calling, are you? Yeah, and the system's dis So what do you, they disconnect you. It's so disconnect me. It's to discourage people. So somehow you have to find out. Maybe I would go to my city hall, your city hall, I mean, yeah. and ask the, I don't know whether it would be the town clerk or whatever, said, here's my problem. I need to talk to somebody who can advise me on what I should do here. Should I call my assemblyman? 
should I call my counselor, my blah, 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 and see what they say. I'm going to have to call. You can't keep calling and getting hung up on. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to call another state agency that maybe is uh, over them, oversees them. You don't even know who to call. What is state agency? Who? Who? Remember the glitch they had with the website, the Obamacare website? At the beginning? Sure. At the beginning? Sure. I mean, I have to have Horizon. I have no choice. Well, you're going to have to contact some other agency that can Cause advise you what's going the on. The agency told me when I was talking to them. Oh, wait, wait. How about one of these news services, CBS, ABC, or NBC, where they have uh, uh, consumer affairs or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Uh, Maybe yeah. you should call the Bureau of Consumer Affairs. When I first spoke to them. Are you going to call any of these agencies? You're not really responding to me on these What questions. do you want me to do? Call them. Contact them. That's what I'm trying to get through to you on. You're going to have to contact them. Contact the media? Why not? Why can't, why, why can't I call Trenton and have the state pick up and resolve the problem? Because you're going to get the same thing. You cut off the whole... That's government. If you go outside of government, you might get a response. Yeah, well, they t they told me originally. going through the government channels. They told me originally. You wait, wait, you want to go through Trenton? You totally disregarded everything I just told you about calling an assemblyman, a congressman, going to your town councilman or whatever. Is the town going to do something? I don't know. But it's better than what you're getting. At least it'll get you somewhere, maybe. Maybe they can give you some advisement. Okay, thank you, William H. Morrow the third. He had had a bit of an attitude today, to say the least, but uh you know. I had to straighten him out. But um he's going on a on a high a long hiatus. So this is most likely the last show uh uh his contract ran out with uh newsletter censored and uh um, Mega Life 21, so you know, he still will be doing commercials for us, but uh, you know, he's uh, he has other interests, other priorities, but uh, you know, uh, we wish him well in his future endeavors. Uh, I know he's been with us for a very long time, but you know, he had some personal things to iron out. And, uh, hey, Reverend Bill, any human being at any given time could uh, f uh, fall victim of uh, temptation and be lured away from, you know, they, their eyes could be taken off the prize and they can, uh, when they Maybe come, they weren't there in the first place. When they come to that fork in the road and they see the, uh, the wide road open your pot pie with it you know the, the wide road uh, the wide pretty road to hell and versus the narrow road no such thing as hell well i mean i mean when they come to crossroads yeah like you said they may they it's possibly that a person was never there to begin with that's great just like there are self-professed so-called progressives on the internet uh -huh. that uh, that are mass right wing inculcated fixations. Yeah, they're they're they claim to be progressive, but they're not. They're they're right wingers in disguise, like uh, Judy in disguise. Judy in disguise. Mm -hmm. You remember that song? Like uh, like Danny Mount is a uh, he claims to be a uh, a libertarian or he claims to be moderate, but. Uh, He's anti-social services. He's anti-welfare. So I call. I says, "Why don't you just come clean and, and say what you really are? You're you're a right winger. You're conservative." He says, "No, no, no. Libertarians are split in half. You have those that go to the left, and those that go to the right. Um, like example, Jesse Ventura is, is, is running under the libertarian label, but Jesse Ventura is more to the left, whereas." You have other libertarians that are very right wing, that don't believe in uh, helping the poor. That's very right wing. What about guaranteed annual income? 
They need no, to, no, they need to do away with the they're, social services. They're corporate uh, ass kissers, corporate suck up whores, mm. and they just. Uh, well, that's not good because they're supposed to be fiscally conservative, libertarian. No, I just don't like the sneaky people that like to uh, use another name instead of Republican, and 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 you know, to make themselves more acceptable when they're really just flat out conservative Republicans. With a, with, a, with a nicer name, you know, or like I was told, uh, many libertarians are just Republicans that smoke pot. Nah. <laughs> you know, but, um, oh, getting back to what I said before, I found, finally found what I was looking for, red quinoa, which is a uh, pseudo grain from, used by the Incas in Peru one of the most highly nutritious foods on the planet. And uh, I've been consuming yellow quinoa, so I finally found red quinoa in this local ethnic store. Very low price compared to red quinoa that a person would find in a health food store. They would pay a lot more money, like Whole Foods. And uh, I was very happy with it. Uh, it it's, it's a little chewier. You have to cook it a little longer than yellow quinoa, but it, it, it has a better flavor and it has a higher nutritional profile. Now, somebody posted over in, at the Facebook group that I have called Everything is Food. Somebody posted something to the effect that um, the price of red quinoa is so high because of the um, the increased international demand for all quinoa and the Peruvians the people in Peru cannot afford to eat quinoa anymore because of the international demand and international price of it went too high now what the hell why should in other words if something is produced in the country of origin, the international price should not affect the people in the, con the country of origin. You know what I mean? Because of international rates, what the hell does that have to do with the native people, the local people? Gas that is oil that is found, refined, etc., in America is sold on the world market and sold at that price to Americans well, instead of cheaper price. Well, In Saudi Arabia, Venezuela, gas costs 31 cents. Venezuela, gas is very low priced. Please? It is supposed to be, in the country of origin, mm -hmm. it is supposed to be at, at the lowest price mm -hmm. because the supply is like right there, mm -hmm. right? So using this excuse, this uh, conservative capitalist rip-off, unethical, underhanded excuse of saying that well, the international cost of rate of all quinoa is super high, therefore the Peruvians can't afford to eat quinoa. Well, guess what? The quinoa is grown in Peru, and the Peruvians live in Peru. It's an excuse to stick it to you. Yeah, baby. In the capitalist system. Yeah. Buy low, sell high. Buy low, sell high. Uh, okay. You're done, right? Yep. Would you like uh, another uh, 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 tissue or napkin? Yeah, you could give me one, but I don't really need it at the moment. Uh, uh, all right. Tell me if you do. Mm. Okay. Um, so these are all excuses for screwing <laughs> people. Supply and demand, uh, let the buyer beware and everything. So this guy, you know, he was saying this on Facebook like he was trying to explain why quinoa has gone up. I guess they did the same to him. They did the same thing with flaxseed oil. Back in the day, it used to be called linseed oil, and it was. And I painted with it. And it was dirt. Well, a company called Haynes, Haynes, which makes Hollywood products. Haynes uh, was sold in health food stores, and and it was like 
a big bottle of flaxseed oil was like four dollars a bottle. And then all of a sudden all the medical information came out and flaxseed oil shot up super high. Same thing with omega-3 fish oil. Um, it's a capitalist retail sneaky sleight of hand, whatever you want to call it. Underhanded trick. Call it corrupt. It's corrupt. It's corrupt, like, like um, corporate welfare and uh, Republican Congress people being the biggest moochers who ever lived. But if the poor ask for a little help, oh, it's horrible. It's bad. You should die. If the you rich have the poor in their sights. You should die. Yeah, they do. They do. Uh, did you see the lovely scrolls that I put the Bible verses on? A variety of scrolls. So this way they're they're more eye-catching, and I, I I use the bold Times New Roman font. Guess what? What? Does it do any good? Only to those that like it and read it. But to those that should read it and should pay attention to it and should not alter it and should not As alter they it. Do. But I did put that I did put that on a scroll. The ah. last the the last. Uh, chapter or verse of Revelation that he who adds to this book or he who takes away from this book I have that on a scroll too I did that on purpose because I know Republicans are trying to rewrite the Bible oh yeah that's right but, yep. but do the teabaggers uh, read it and learn something from it nope nope so when, when the Bible says the whole world is deceived in Revelation, Revelation 12, 9. They're not kidding. They're deceived. And the, he who is deceived does not know he's deceived. But you got to be an idiot to like, to be deceived and not ever realize you're deceived. That's the way it is. With all the information that is available to us. I mean, there are people who actually just watch Fox News and and they don't turn anything else on? When Mr. Cheney was in office as vice president under G.W. Bush, it was mandatory that that was the only station that would be on. Because they, they wanted to brainwash people. Well, Ken Creighe keeps on talking about how wonderful Glenn Beck is. Oh, did you hear that Glenn Beck the other day? Oh, did you hear that Glenn Beck the other day? I says, no, I don't want to hear what Glenn Beck has to say. The right winger. He's trying a more moderate approach these days. Okay? They all have one thing in common. He's trying to be a populist. More mainstream Republican or? Populist. Populist. The people. He's, um, and some, they're always, the media is always quoting some right wing idiot when he talks about what God wants. Well, you know, there are like over 2,000 Christian, so-called Christian denominations. <clears throat> Each one has their <clears throat> traditions, etc. In, uh, uh, in, in violence to Mark 7, verses 7 through 9. And how many people, how many of them really know what's in the Bible? just pointed up. They I don't, have. obviously, because they don't adhere to Mark 7, 7 through 9. You make God's word of no effect through your traditions. Right. Bingo. Yeah, well, um, let's, let us get back to these readings. It's one of those tricky questions said former quarterback and current NFL network analyst Kurt Warner, or Warner, a devout Christian. Oh, gee. I, I believe God devout. has your best interest in mind. Well, well yeah. that 
correlates to winning and losing football games, I'm not fully sure. God is not too fond of competition. Competition is not godly. Warner won and lost a Super Bowl in his 12-year NFL career during which he played for the Rams, Giants, and Cardinals. Do I believe that as a son of God that my life is important to him? No question about it. Oh, he is? He's important? Said Warner, who was named the most valuable player when he led the St. Louis Rams to the Super Bowl title, 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 in 2000. Where do we draw that line between what's important to him and what's not? <sighs> But I don't know how exactly that fits into winning and losing, per se. See, God is up there. He's waiting very patiently till next Sunday. He's got a giant 800-inch uh, 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 television flat set. Screen, yeah. You know, flat screen. And he's waiting. And he's, he, he's going to bet on one of the three. And he will help them to a win. And, he, and, he, and he's got a um, he's got a wet bar next to him with every every frosty cold beer and the that nachos was, that with was, the Velveeta that was, that, that was ever made. And he's got the wings. He's got a big mariachi band serving him the nachos nonstop, freshly made. He cares about the Super Bowl Sunday. Oh sure, sure he does. Just like he cares about Joel Olstein getting the perfect parking spot. Dream on. We put the question to some members of the clergy. Does God care who wins the Super Bowl? I think it's an insult to God to involve him in this. No, said Rabbi Arthur Wiener. I agree with the rabbi of the Jewish Community Center of Paramus, New Jersey. Congregation Beth Tikva. Tikva. And it's not a question of God having bigger things on his plate. We live in a world where we have a religious understanding that God cares about everything. But the truth is, we don't believe that this is the kind of thing God needs to, or should be, involved with. Oh, sure, there, there, is, there, are, there are probably, uh, I don't know the exact figure, but with all the tens of thousands of children dying in third world countries and going to bed starving and all that stuff, and, and, and poor people starving and I'm sure God cares about Super Bowl Sunday. The world plays out the way it does to its own laws and logic. So when you're praying for your team to win, you're praying for the way the world operates to be upset for your own rather small and limited personal needs. It's very, it's very vain and selfish to think that God would care about something that's in the world as unimportant and trivial as professional sports. A worldly business, non-spiritual. The Reverend George McGovern of Oradell. Yeah, not the George McGovern that from Minnesota. An interdenominational Christian minister who is team chaplain for the Giants and Yankees agreed. They, they need a chaplain? I don't think so, he said. I hate to be his spokesman because he might care. I don't know. He hasn't revealed that to me. He might be a secret fan of one of the teams. People are putting a lot of, a little too much importance on, on these championship games. 
my thought is God is not nearly as concerned with the performance or the play on the field as he is the hearts of the guys who are performing or playing on the field. Yeah, like the, we're about the behavior of that uh, gentleman from the Seattle Seahawks, that obnoxious Mr. Dreadlock, the obnoxious, loud individual that taunts everyone and brags and yells. What is his position? I think it's cornerback. He is actually the quarterback. Corner, not quarter. I think there's a corner. Corner. There's a yeah. He has a. He's on defense. Nice. Okay. But he seems to stick himself in front of the camera every chance he gets. He's very flamboyant and obnoxious, and, and the camera looks for him also, which doesn't help the situation, and he's, he's controversial. He trash talks, bad mouths, uh, instigates trouble, uh, and he's got like a, I hear he has like a master's degree too, he's not stupid. He's not stupid. Well, He's a smart guy. I have to disagree, sir. The degrees are worthless in regard to human nature. Well, degrees. Look at all the people on Wall Street with all their degrees. They're as crooked as they come. Well, a degree simply means that you have the ability to memorize facts. It has nothing to do with how you are as a person, your character, you know, what's in your heart. It just means you can memorize facts like a like a living database, pretty much, right? I mean, you, you can memorize facts to get high grades on your exams and to pass them. But in the long run, what difference does it make? Right, and the same thing in the, in the overall picture, in the long run, what difference does the World Series or the Super Bowl Talking about degrees. Oh, degrees. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, what if it, you went to? It means you're competent enough to listen to. It. What if you went to uh, Elijah's colleges or schools that he set up? Elisha yeah. set up to uh, build character, and you received no degree. Okay. Our world doesn't make that important. Our Correct. This world doesn't. And that is the problem, isn't it? And therefore... Anything that's in the world is concerned about one thing only. Can you increase the bottom line of some company? And therefore, those are some of the things that, that need to change. The whole system is totally... Corrupt. corrupt. Corrupt, yeah. But, the effort that affects the scoreboard creates a gray area for some. My gut would say, I don't think so, said the Reverend Warren Hall, director of campus ministry at Seton Hall University. I do think what goes into it is what is the effort on behalf of who was playing. I think that is more so what makes an outcome happen. So, if therefore you want to say that effort was a strength given to a team by God, then we'd say, well, yeah, God was part of that outcome. No, he wasn't. Too bad, Thibault. Hall pointed out <coughs> that people should remember that winning isn't the only <coughs> reward. Good can come from apparently negative circumstances. Losing can have its merits, as uh, 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 what you call it, Karpov. He said he learned more from his losses in chess than the winnings. He even wrote a book on it. Maybe I don't know what that benefit is just yet. Maybe. It's going to strengthen my character, or maybe it's going to motivate me to be better, said Hall, who is teaching a course at Seton Hall on sports and spirituality. I think we have to look a little more deeply. Most sports fans don't think past wins and losses, and some are uncomfortable with the player's public profession of faith. 
At the same time, the truly faithful can be disappointed by their teammates who don't follow the life they proclaim. People are always watching. People always want to see if what you say is backed up by how you live. Especially when it comes to faith. I guess that's what disappointed me the most. When you say one thing and then you saw a completely different kind of living. Nobody is perfect. We all misrepresent, misrepresent our faith at times, or even numerous times, but to say something very forthright and act outright contradictory, I always thought that would hurt the cause. I am not overly impressed when I see certain people who have not been paragons of virtues or moral behavior doing some great athletic feat then praising God because it seems very contrived. Yeah. I think he meant I think he's talking about Mr. Tebow there. Huh? Yeah, well Mr. Tebow can't find a home. Nobody, yeah. nobody wants to hire him. I ain't got no home. Yeah, but he's, he's, I think he's... Frogman Henry. And, and, and the Jets didn't play him at all, and he was way better than Mark Sanchez. But anyway, I'm surprised because he's, he's a big, strong guy, and uh, as a quarterback goes, and he's not afraid to run with the ball, you know, and he's, he, he'll scramble, and he's, you know, he'll... he'll I, I don't know. I'm impressed by him, the, his style of quarterback. Have, doesn't require the big money... You think maybe I don't think he's he persecuted is. because he's a devout uh, Christian? No, he might be being persecuted because he's contrived. Explain, please. It's not based on anything but crap. Oh. His devoutness. It's a show, like the Pharisees of old who prayed in the streets oh. to be seen of men. In other words, they were not ego. they were not humble. That's correct. That's correct. About their relationship with God and their praying. And they were not humble about it. Yeah. They did it as a show. Like the loud mouth at a um, non denominational evangelical church service is always one person that gets up there and says, I wanna give testimony Sorry. and they're they're all uh, they they get very melodramatic and they play a huge violin. And they go on and on and on and on and on. Me, 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 me. But, if it's an honorable person who's behaved nicely and played by the rules, kicks a field goal or scores a touchdown, and at that moment acknowledges his creator, I think it's a wonderful thing. Your creator doesn't care about competition or any business venture. That's what I think. I think it's of, of the world and it's of Satan. For Christian athletes, there is a natural intersection of sports and religion. The sports culture almost puts an athlete or coach in a place where his heart can understand the gospel because his heart is being shaped by the nature of sport, uh. discipline, teamwork, respect for authority. Depending on the authority. Those are three pillars of the religious life. Yeah, depending on your authority. You should always question. All the things that go into making an athlete a good athlete and a great athlete are the same ingredients that go into a man living a life of faith. Uh, Whatever happened to prove all things hold fast that which is good. Yes. Hey, an athlete is just a chosen career. That's all it is. What but, if you're a CPA? Why, you're no good? An athlete is just a career. It's, it's part of the world. It's how you make your money. Uh, 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 um, you get paid, you're overpaid and overrated, yeah. true. true. The tickets are way too high, true. But it's just another job. God is not of 
worldly things like this. McGovern believes the feelings associated with religious faith are particularly intense in the NFL. What this person is really. Where the emotion, violence, and possible ability of serious injury are always so close to the surface. Oh yeah, God really wants you to uh, to pulverize the quarterback. <gasps> it's a level of vulnerability that few others can understand. My guess is there are guys who build these skyscrapers and they stand on these girders and they're 500 feet above the ground and I, I have feeling they have some similar moments emotionally where they say, God, please keep my balance. God, I don't want to fall. Gadzooks. When a human being is being put in a very risky, dangerous situation, he tends to look up for help. They're wired. Well, they people also choose those occupations that are very risky. Nobody holds a shotgun to their head. They choose to do these things. Like they choose to be an athlete. Um, you know, but the whole se the whole subject of competition and, and, and contact violent <laughs> sports. Uh, I hate to break the news to them. I just don't see God supporting that. McGovern and Warner caution that people not read, not read, excuse me, too much into the fact that faith seems to be announced after a win. It is not often that a losing player begins a post-game interview by thanking God. When you thank God, I don't think it's necessarily always about thank you for making me win today. Hold on. Go ahead. As much as it is, thank you for the gifts you've given me. The place you put me in. But that is how people are going to lean into it. These are, these are bird brains you're talking about. You win a game or make a play and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank uh, you, Jesus. This person is actually saying this. This person is saying this. Verbatim. Say, this person is nuts. Some people who play the game say these things after the after a win or after a good play. Thank you, Jesus. Well, that's what the uh, the born again uh, right wing evangelicals do. They they you know they think everything is connected to God or Satan. Everything. And they think God cares about them, the little worms that they are. Grasshoppers. The yeah. grasshoppers that they are. The filthy sinners that they are. Yeah. Okay. People think, why does Jesus care about him making the great play? Which I think a Christian or anyone expressing their faith is doing it in a bigger manner than just thank you for letting me make that play. Yeah. That is particularly true in those post-game on-field circles that involve both teams. Right. It's thanking God for safety, for our gifts, and allowing us to complete compete in this manner. Yeah. For putting us in the position we had. It's about praying. We can go out from that point forward and be representative of Him. Praying for the safety of the team traveling. Again, not about winning and losing, about the big picture. Helping us be representative of him through whatever capacity that is. I also think it's a great representative of what people see as two opposing sides coming together. Hey, winning or losing is not the most important thing. Sure. The public testimony is predominantly a Christian action. Jews are not always known for wearing our religious hearts on our sleeves. Many Jews have a different sense of how necessary that is to do it in public. No, they're, they're, they're fair and nice enough not to proselytize and, and bop people over the head and shove their religious views down other people's throats. And show up at 10 o'clock in the morning? 10 o'clock? 
higher earlier than that. Uh, earlier now? They want, you want to get rid of a Jehovah's Witness? Open the door naked? I don't answer the door when I, uh, early in the morning. I don't do that. I have to. Not up early in the morning. Just to spite early, <laughs> just to spite early birds who expect me to open the door. I won't answer it. On the other hand, then I got to rush and get dressed, and, and then it might be for nothing. Let's take Tim Tebow phenomenon. Yeah, he hasn't been in the spotlight in a long time. A lot of people made a fun of him. True. A lot of people made. But here was a devout Christian, an honorable man, a world-class athlete. Yeah. Although he may have not had the success later in his career, at that moment, him choosing to acknowledge his creator as the source of his strength, his victory, his athletic feat. Yeah, he was maybe a, he's deceived. A show off. He knew the cameras were on him. I may not see the need for it, but I don't see anything wrong with it. And I think it demonstrated a certain piety, which I think is admirable. It's my shillelagh. For me, that's a far cry from asking God for your team to win. That difference is the key. Does God give a player the talent? and strength to help his team to victory? Gifts that the player expresses gratitude for? Or did the player pray to win and God rewarded him with a confetti-filled victory and parade at Disney World? Oh, God's responsible for the confetti-filled parade now? You're coming dangerously close to making prayer and the religious experience silly, yeah. undignified, and petty. That's true. We don't want to trivialize religious experience. That's what they're doing. Oh, I need to make this play as a quarterback. Oh, let's all pray real quick. Oh, we need to win the game. Oh, I need to win the playoffs. Uh-oh. Uh Big business. Sports is big business. Yeah, you know, There's nothing spiritual about it. You know, if those that think God cares if you get your big fat paycheck and win the championship, you're you're, you're being very selfish and vain. God has been cut off from the vast majority of humanity since the God. Right now, he only cares about his elect. He washed his hands. He says, all right, you rejected me. You're on your own, people. Create right. your own right economics. Create your own way of living. You don't, Create your own. You'll see. You don't need me anymore. You'll see. That's when uh, the, the material world, Satan's world, began, right? Right after the... Uh, Growing out, and that's how, and that's why today Republicans regard work as a punishment. Oh, if they work, but they want the poor to work for a lousy few crumbs of food stamps, they want children to go to work. Yes, because it's a punishment. If you're poor, Republicans want you to work, but they do not want to work. They want to be the massa. Yeah. The CEO to give the order. And, and their rich friends are the only ones that should get welfare in, in their eyes. Well, they don't call it welfare, they call it welfare. And in fact, they don't call it that. They call it job creating. Well, yeah, sure. Yeah, outsource creating. The uh, and the percentage of welfare that the rich get is astronomically higher than the percentage that the poor get when they receive welfare. Welfare is 
crap. A joke. I mean, New Jersey welfare recipients receive $140 a month, for God's sakes. Food stamps is a drop in the bucket. And none of those prob programs do what they're supposed to do. They don't. They don't. They're supposed to lift people out of poverty so they no longer need food stamps. Oh, but that's what jobs do. Really? For seven twenty-five an hour? I don't think so. Ain't gonna work. Yeah, it's not gonna work. It's, if, if, if your rents, not counting utilities and other basic uh, expenses, are way up here, and your salary is still decades, you know, uh, and way decades behind the times and way below the cost of living? Or is that really uh, offensive? 213 an hour for those restaurant people, etc. Was, was Herman Cain uh, uh, behind passing that law? Passing that law? I think what so. He had to do? I, I heard he was involved because he was in the food Probably industry. Probably was involved. Oh, but come on, Mr. Pizza Two dollars and thirteen cents is not the minimum wage, even. And on top of that, the restaurant owners make these servers getting two thirteen an hour. They make them clean up the place. And I believe they what also the take some of their tips. So they're they're like practically slaves. They're parasites, my friend. Big, uh, oh yeah, the restaurant owners are parasites. Parasitic. I mean, if if they if their income solely relies on tips, which it does, if you're getting two dollars and thirteen cents an hour, the server should not have to give you one penny. Restaurant owners, not one penny. And uh, here we go again. Republican critics have questioned why Bridgegate the cats always win is being treated differently by the media than such incidents as Benghazi uh, Internal Revenue Service scrutiny of Tea Party political uh, activities uh, and National Security Agency surveillance of telephone and operations fast and furious. There actually are clear differences between them and Bridgegate. The U.S. State Department did not wish harm upon the ambassador in Benghazi. The attack was an unintended, perhaps avoidable, and terribly unfortunate consequence. The IRS employees did not attack hundreds of thousands of tax filers for political revenge. Their actions, though terribly biased and a violation of equal protection, were directed at a small group of tax. NSA telephone surveillance was started under a Republican administration and continued by a democratic one. And whether the courts ultimately rule that it was an intrusion of pri a privacy or not, it was, at minimum, a well-intended attempt to fight terrorism and protect American lives. Bullshit. Operation Fast and Furious was a bungled undercover program. However poorly orchestrated it or not, it had a valid purpose, an intent to track the route of smuggled guns and make America safe. In contrast, Bridgegate was not an unintended consequence of a valid operation. 
the traffic study was fabricated. There was no reason for the action other than political revenge. And that's and the, one, it, yeah, that's one thing. Then there's the, the Storm Sandy money disappearing. And the inconvenience drivers had not done anything to be delayed. If the Republican pundits are going to make comparisons minimum, they should be parallel situations. So other Republicans are in favor in, in to punishing people that do not support them. Not just Chris Christie, but right? other Republicans believe in this bullying. Well, they believe that, that all these other things here, uh, 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 Benghazi, the NSA spying, Or Fast and Furious and, and, and the other one, they're as equal as Bridgegate. They're equal to Bridgegate. Oh, they're using, or even more they're using Obama as a diversion, getting people's attention, focus off of Bridgegate. Chris Christie. Really? Well, they, 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 Christie didn't do anything really they wrong. Just, they, they, the, the, the only the only no logical. I mean, it, to be fair, uh, Obama, aside from all the obstruction he gets from the Republicans, he's actually done a lot of good for the mainstream and and the poor. I mean, this Obama care is wonderful. I mean, come on. No co-payment. People can go to the dentist. They got they got medical coverage now with, with reputable insurance companies. They just don't want the black man in the White House. Yeah. <laughs> and they don't want 30 or whatever million it is uh, 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 poor people and uh, other people in need of insurance covered. No, oh yeah, the Republicans. They don't. They don't want. They don't want the poor subsidized at all. Yeah, they want the private sector to continue gouging, to continue cutting people off when they, uh, it's costing them too much for their insurance. Oh, you have uh, you have a, a, a cancer. Uh, it's going to cost a hundred thousand dollars. No, not previous condition. It's going to cost a hundred thousand. No, we're cutting you off. That's what they uh, were doing. Pre previous conditions uh, excluded. No, well, re well, Republicans and the CEOs of the insurance companies, they just want to grab the premiums. They really don't That's want to correct. pay out claims. That's correct. They being a crook. It always points to being a crook. No matter because, how you shake it. Because, call it capitalism, call it whatever, the business ethic, business ethic yeah. of the United States is corrupt. The it way is of corrupt. Thinking. It is based on stuff that came out of Babylon. It, it's Nimrod. It's not just what my uncle Phil okay. says that it's it's a company uh, providing goods and services that the people need, uh, 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 making a product better, and it, it's more than that. It's a, it has become about obsessive greed at 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 uh, it's obsessive greed. Um, at the expense of the planet and, and people. If a company is providing a product, they don't want any other company coming up with the same product and undercutting their product. But that's competition that's is one. part of the Oh, the they game. will say they love competition. They don't, not they really. Do not. They do not. They don't want competitors. That's correct. And that sort of limits choices for 
for consumers because let's say did you ever see that commercial for uh, Verizon it I shows four maps of the United States and it shows uh, ATT's coverage uh, T-Mobile's coverage and another one's coverage and then Verizon's I mean, coverage the towers the no it's, it's, it's a map hot with spots. red yeah hot spots red, yeah. red all over well Verizon covers the United States more, more than all those three other companies oh yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. but when you do that everybody has to come to you if they live in Seattle, Washington, there's no option. Or if they live in New York, or if they live in Texas, the options they are have li limited. To you. Yeah, exactly. It's like, it's like Walmart opening up in a rural area, and everything has to be by Walmart, including your job, because there's nothing else around. So they got you by the short hairs, by yeah. the balls. Um, like for instance, if if there was uh, if you're in the cell phone business, that's kind of difficult to uh, to make analogies to. But why not hundreds of small companies covering certain areas? You see, competition, which have standards though that can yeah. use the the towers of the other companies. Competition when it comes to a company, a uh, business does two great things. It increases the the overall quality of the product because everybody, every company's um, R&D lab, their engineers have to be on their toes at all times. <laughs> the product gets better and better with time and the wages go up because now somebody could say, what? You you only want to give me a, a twenty five cent raise? Really? I can go to this other competitor, and they're going to give me two dollars more an hour than you're giving me. Cool. You know, so there's a lot of options, and a customer who gets burnt by one company can say, "Screw you! I'm shopping somewhere else. I'm buying the other one." In other words, it's a question of freedom. It's freedom. It does a lot of good. Um, and uh, a monopoly does a lot of bad. Uh, that's why we had such things as the anti-trust laws. But of course, they now sit in the back seat and are not used. But when they were used, used against the union. You know, the funny thing is the word Citizen United actually sounds positive, but it's Well, not. that's what the Republicans do. What but about Clear Skies Amendment uh, from under G.W. Bush, which allowed a more arsenic in our water and etc. Oh, yeah. Clear and more skies. pollution. Clear skies. What is that like, calling an obese person skinny as a nickname? Exactly. Exactly. Oh man! Oh, it's like a magician's trick. Slight the of hand. The oldest trick in the book. Slight of hand. Look over there. Look over there, like the commercial. <laughs> the Geico commercial. Yeah, yeah look over there. <laughs> oldest trick in the book. The right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing, right? And in the case of Republicans, the right brain doesn't know what the left brain. <laughs> and of course they have a lack of oxytocin which makes them quite yeah. non-friendly and empathetic well um, um, um this woman has a book out on that right now I forget the name of it but uh, she does go into that and shows how oxytocin you know works among animals because if they don't have it, an animal won't take care of its young and will not involve in mating and yeah. etc. It is a drawing hormone, you know? Oh, the, drawing um, people together. 
Uh, Kim Kardashian's uh, uh, husband is threatening to leave the country. He's, he's pulling a Rush Limbaugh. You remember when Rush Limbaugh says if this does, if this takes place concerning Obama, I'm moving to Costa Rica, and he never moved? Well, he did. As far as I know now, you can, don't, don't quote me on this. He moved to WOR. That's a From WABC. It wasn't Costa Rica. <laughs> So, you know, he moved. Yeah, maybe he can get all the Oxycontin and uh, young boys he wants Ooh. in Costa Rica. Oh, boy. This is another talk show. Oh, Kanye. Um, Kanye West. Kanye West. Uh, something he's annoyed about and he's threatening to... Uh, he's always annoyed about something. ...leave the country. Uh, well, first of all, he married into the Kardashian, the free... Freakazoid Kardashian family with the uh, bossy uh, matriarch there, Mama Kardashian, that controls everything. The daughters are stupid, Jeez. dumb as they come, and sluts, and very spoiled. So the man probably has no say in anything. And uh, um, he might be smarter than all of them put together, Kanye. And, and now the husband of uh, Mama Kardashian, uh, Bruce Jenner, had a sex change operation. And he, he, he makes an ugly woman, by the oh, way. I thought you were serious. No, I'm dead serious. I know, but in, in real life. Yeah, I am dead serious. Bruce Jenner? He, he looks like the Joker from Batman. No, 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 no but I mean in real life. Life. He had a sex change? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, what the hell? How embarrassing, not only to the Olympics. What's his name? And to his yeah. family, but to Mama Kardashian. Yeah. Uh, oh, my husband uh, had a sex change operation. He's abroad now. So what's his name now, Brucey? Or Bruhilda? Or something? Runehilda? Call himself an ugly, an ugly female, an ugly transsexual. You should call himself. It's like the Joker from Batman with the mouth. It's horrible. He looks horrible. He, I knew he. My sister told me she couldn't believe it. She says I knew he. It looked like he was transforming, and it wasn't positive. How embarrassing! That's even worse than Honey Boo Boo's family. Honestly, I would rather look at, at her obese Honey Boo Boo's mother and listen to her rant than to look at Bruce Jenner, who's who's tarnishing his Olympic gold medals. Shameful. Anyway, over the past decade, Governor Christie has been an outstanding public sector. Oh, really? News to me. As U.S. Attorney for New Jersey, he cleaned out a great deal of corrupt politicians from the political system. That is true. He's a, he's a very good uh, he's very good at that. Most, Cleaning out corruption except his own, right? Most of whom were Democrats. Ah, he's got an agenda. And put the offenders in jail. But there, there were no Republican offenders? No. How come the news media never mentioned that? Interesting. He brought dignity to the office of governor. Just wanted to remove Democrats. That's the dignity he's talking about. When he was elected in a state that is largely democratic. The people loved him! Until the incident involving the George Washington Bridge. Man, I hope somebody brings that up about him. Or having Democrats arrested. I hope somebody brings up everything about it. In, 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 
the subpoenas. Christie states he knew nothing about it. And I, for one, believe him. Oh, this is an ass-kissing Tea Party idiot from New Jersey. We're very fair around here. New Jersey? Yes. One of the jerk-offs that voted for him. Yeah. I am a small business owner. Mention his jerk-off's name at the end. With 18 excellent employees. Yeah, 18 suckers that, get, that don't get paid much. I don't always know what each one is doing every minute of the day. He doesn't always dream of it. But I trust, <coughs> excuse me, they are doing the right thing. Still, you just cannot be everywhere all the time. Going forward, Christie deserves the benefit of the doubt. So says Mr. Sam Levine. Sam what? Levine. Sam Levine, you are a, 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 an asshole. You are a dickhead. You, you are a, a corporate uh, uh, materialistic greedy corporate suck up a douchebag for supporting voting for Chris Christie in a traditionally democratic state. Some people, mainly those in the Republican Party, are saying these investigations are part of it. that they are a witch hunt. As a Democrat of sound mind who abhors false, misleading comparisons, both sides do this. However, However. the bridge closing may have been ignited in the governor's There are mounting credible allegations and emails with redactions that demand full investigation. It appears from the start that Governor Christie, a former federal prosecutor, was unwilling to dig deeply into what led up to the closing of two access lanes to the George Washington Bridge. How could the government of any state ignore such an obviously odd and unsafe event that went on for four days? For me, there is no benefit of the doubt. There is only the need to separate fact from fiction. Let's hope that's what we do. Okay? The theme. Probably, uh, probably, uh, raising quite a bit of money. Tax breaks for the rich. More than likely. Otherwise, why would he support somebody who only has the rich in their, you know, um, well, he only mentioned their best interests of the rich in mind only. He only mentioned Christie's. They were removed from office. We don't 
know that. Maybe they got off. Maybe they weren't uh, uh, guilty. Oh, uh, so when they were seen walking off, it wasn't they weren't walking off in cuffs. Who knows? But the point is, <coughs> prosecutors have brought cases that were garbage against innocent people all around the whole United States. That's why the state can't kill people. Because they have in the past killed innocent people. These, any of these people sue for false arrest? No, they don't. How can they get justice whilst they're in prison? How can they act in their own defense? They have no mood Well, if, they, if the other side doesn't have sufficient evidence, what about the lawyers, the defending lawyers of the... Uh, they are the usually... Uh, what do you call those guys? Uh, some, the defenders? Public defenders. Public defenders. And may I say that they are not there uh, to um, waste a lot of time on their client's case. Well, when they're getting no more. It's not a question of how much time they have to spend. It's a it's a question of whether or not the other side has enough evidence to convict. People have gone to jail. Have been killed. The evidence was shoddy. How many people were made innocent in jail with the uh, DNA testing? But I wonder... Like rape cases and yeah, etc. Yeah, yeah. Well, what does that mean? A prosecutor brings evidence. That doesn't mean it means, it means nothing. Well, DNA is pretty heavy duty evidence. That's now. I'm talking now, about the then. prosecutor who brings evidence. And how come, how come these uh, uh, um, tragedies, these injustices never meant never uh, got to the national news. Because the national news, since the 80s, is owned by big corporations okay. who don't wish to rock the boat. So these stupid... They certainly don't want to aggravate the public. So these stupid moronic Tea Party people online, on Facebook, that call, that still call it the liberal U.S. media, don't know what to talk about because the media has not been liberal for a long, long time or ever. Ever. It's supposed to be unbiased, but I, I mean, now we have the biased media, but it's not biased towards liberals at all. They don't know what they're talking about. Yes, they do. They are very good at propaganda. And they have made people believe in a liberal media. Perception, my friend, is not fact. That's why some of my some of my um, uh, most form most active uh, response respectful members of the uh, Progressive Discussions Facebook group. That's why they want to eventually uh, uh, ban a troll from the group and kick him out because if they keep on throwing facts at the troll and the troll keeps on repeating the same thing over and over again with no facts and resorts to uh, Name calling and personal attacks that they feel that there's no, it's of no use to debate with the troll. But, but I think it's more embarrassing to leave him there and have me induct him into the troll but Hall of Fame. <laughs> how does that comport with no sense? 
yeah, to keep to keep on uh, banning people that don't agree with you is very pro censorship. It's not anti censorship. Correct. You know what I mean? I, I mean, first it's, amendment was made for laws and you know statements and stuff that we do not agree with. I mean, if somebody if somebody comes into the group post things that the uh, the media never mentions about, let's say, Nazi Germany or uh, anything, anything. You, you don't have to agree with the person. You don't have to like the person, but they still, under, in a country where we're supposed to have freedom of speech and, uh, and no censorship, they're allowed to say what they have to say, but they still have to expect the retribution of others correction. to come down on them. They are to expect correction. Correction or being told off. It's, and, and the person telling somebody off should not be censored either. When I was members of certain groups, they all were dictatorships. They, it was censored. It was censored. And somebody came to me from the group saying that, uh, how come you didn't kick that person out? I go, why? I says, my groups have no censorship. I don't want to be, I don't want to do to others what others have done to me in other groups. I don't think it's right to censor them because they don't agree with you. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, the, the, I hate to say it, but, but there's always some truth to haters. They always have some justifiable reason for hating. It's not fairy tales. Yes, because your friends will never tell you the truth, the whole truth, but your enemies will. Oh yeah, Republicans uh, make it quite simple what their uh, plan is and what their agenda is. It's quite simple, it's, it, and it's refreshing to have a truthful person come clean. You know, it's like what Cher told David Letterman. I rather have somebody tell me how they really yeah. are doing when I ask them. Hi, how are you? How, how have you been? How are you doing? He says, she says, everybody says, oh, I'm great. That's phony. She says, that's phony. I want to hear how they're really doing. But anyway, back to those people. Back to the people. you got to understand that these people, that they're coming from an ideology or a fundamentalist, they will not be changed by anything you or I do or say. But there's also a form of those people in the Democratic Party and with liberals that want to shove, shove their crap down people's throats. And if you don't agree with them, you're demonized. You're no good. You're wicked. You're, they hate you. It's perfect ideology and fundamental perfect example so. perfect example uh -oh. a lot many liberals tend to be vegans I have nothing against veganism or vegetarianism but some of these vegans are animal rights activists they're activists to the extreme where they yell at me for wearing leather or having leather western boots uh, or leather belts or a leather jacket they're they're saying i shouldn't have leather well let me tell you something there's no way i'm wearing a vinyl pointy toed western boots there's no way i'm carrying i'm wearing a vinyl belt around my waist or a vinyl 
original Velcro wallet. I love the feel and the look and the smell of real leather and that's it. There are fanatics uh, on, on the liberal side. Usually they're animal rights activists that are anti a lot of things, man. They're, they're, they're anti-dairy. They're anti... Yeah. You know, it's like it's it's like the human race. Not nothing on this planet ever killed an animal for food or necessity. Like like they're 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 totally wiping out the food chain, which happened to take place the in the old food chain. The Old Testament and the Bible. They always. Yeah. Uh, killed animals for food and, and clothing. And sacrifices. Clothing, you know, they, they had... To feed the priests. They made food out of, uh, I mean, they made clothing out of, like, goat skins and uh, different animal skins, and they uh, they consumed the meat, and uh, uh, they had religious sacrifices. Well, just for a moment, what would happen? Yeah. Say for like in India, they don't kill the cows. It's better. But they, they eat dairy. They do eat they, dairy. Yeah. You know, and go around. Well, you know, I mean, eventually, population explosion. You know. So if you did that with all the animals, what would happen? There's just too many black bear in uh, Passaic County, New Jersey. There's too many deer. You know, the, 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 if they're not killing enough deer, it becomes... They have a, a new animal, well, I believe. Coyotes. Coyote and wolf. A koi wolf. What kind of wolf? Koi wolf, I believe it's called. Koi? Koi wolf. C-O-Y for coyote and wolf. You mean it's a, it's, it's, it's a wolf or a hybrid? It's a hybrid. It's both of them together. A coyote and a wolf. Well, how did, where did the wolf they come? Made it. We have wolves in the... Uh, in, is it in, in, in the Northeast? It's in the United States somewhere. Saw it the other day. Well, I know timber wolves in the North. There's going to be a program on it, I think, on TV. Yeah. Well, coyotes are like one town over from us. There's coyotes oh. in, in Saddlebrook, New Jersey. On Market Street? Yeah, by the, oh, by the park. They're going to the yard, to the yards. Uh, I hear wild turkeys are lo are becoming desensitized to human presence. <laughs> the coyotes are. It's, this is not good. I mean, I have. Uh, I used to imagine that if we could. I have hawks by around. me in my house yeah. for food. Just imagine the overpopulation that would occur. Right. So and of course, maybe the, those uh, vegans are going to get their way because in the end time, the beast will be bothering us. Along with the children being our oppressors, etc. Yeah. Et or, ro or robotics. Robotics, no mention of. No, but... Um, I mean, what's next? The vegans are going to say, "Oh, you, you, you broke the, you, you killed the soy plant. Murder, murder." Uh, uh, I told you about that experiment. The broccoli, the head of broccoli. Murder. I told you about that experiment that Gary No relates. The one guy. What happened? He went in there yelling at the plants and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And then they 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 uh, they stopped the experiment for some time, and the guy came back, and the plants remembered him. The plants remembered him. They got upset when he entered the room. Oh, yeah. They could sense his vibes. Uh, well, how did they know the plants remembered him? 
they they stopped they had whatever seismographs or whatever on the plants and they could see that they were destroyed they were very disturbed so plants give off enough life force energy that they could actually they measure, yeah. measure like they have like an aura that they give off really all i know is the results of the experiment not how they went around you know the, uh, about it okay just know it gary relates it often you know there's a, a, a not to change the subject but the mexicans have this uh variety of fungus or um, fungi and, uh, and uh, like a mushroom that grows on ears of corn that they they slice off like uh, it grows on yeah they, it's uh, like they get two two for one you know uh, i'm curious about what it's called and and how they stimulate the growth i you know, i mean i would love to it's a corn fung corn fung i, I would like to love to get some live spores and and grow uh certain mushrooms uh on my pine trees in the shade you know like portobello or my taki you know uh, or your taki or shiitake my taki my taki your taki <laughs> no my taki no clocky it's just for the immune system <laughs> oh and oyster mushrooms are taste unbelievable is that the ones look like trumpets no they have uh, the shaft is really thick uh, and the head is very small uh, <laughs> no comment I think the trumpets <coughs> trumpets are called trumpets no they look like yeah they, they yeah. yeah the I know the cremini I hate them all I think the cremini is a baby portobello yes they are I hate them all okay you're not a fun guy then that's correct I hate you know, fungus you know there's a fungus Fungus. fungus you know mushrooms are a very good meat replacement for uh, vegans because they have a very hearty That's what they, say. they have a hearty rich flavor about them. I do not think they have the same taste or mouth feel as a ham in burger. Have you ever um, ate a grilled portobello mushroom? I'll gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. Well, you know what you get as far as uh, 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 fast food hamburgers? You don't get hamburger like, you know, like what you know definitely what goes into it. You get pink slime. Yeah, we haven't heard about that in a while, have we? Yeah, that was taken off the media real quick. Yeah, yeah. Pink slime slime uh, which is all meat byproducts ground up it could be roadkill <laughs> they put ammonia in it to sterilize it then you ingest the ammonia not only that i was looking at a program yesterday on the history channel yeah it was about food and it showed what like the big casinos in las vegas and etc do with the leftover foods from the buffets and stuff like that toss it no they don't they take it out they sell to the pig farmer exactly after they clean it i saw the i saw the show it up i saw the show. Saw the show yeah it was uh don oh my uh, God. Uh, andrew zimmer he, well, he this was uh this was just a food uh, a show on food it wasn't zimmer in other words the pigs are receiving the uh, the food that's uh, removed from the buffet table. The pigs are being fed food that should go to the homeless. So the pigs are I don't know if I want eating. the homeless to have that food. Well, they're selling it to the pig farmer at a very cheap rate which is still more than they would get if they throw it out but i mean the food that they're pulling out of the buffet is food that was sitting on the heat 
it's, it wasn't rancid food. It was just kind of like mushy food that, that's been sitting there. But it's not food that's going to hurt you. You know, now that food. Right away. That if food. If you get it to the, to the well, homeless. But why can't we get money to the homeless? It was Let them hot. buy their own food. It was hot. Well, there, there's your food stamps. No! Money! Money! Sure. Guaranteed annual income! Say that mantra! I don't like annual because then you don't get paid for overtime. You can pay by the week. No good, but yeah. That's providing they don't make you work over 40 hours. You're not working, you're getting it for free. Oh. Guaranteed annual income. Well, then, then we yeah, have you don't have to get food stamps. Then we have to tax, the, then we have to tax the rich again. Oh, no. Oh, I didn't think about that. Of course you tax the stinking rich. You're damn right, stinking rich. Oh, my God. They've been on a vacation for over 30 years. That's right. Now, how, what are we doing on time? What time we got? It's late. It's almost quarter of. Of five? Yeah. Oh, that now we better. Bang it up. That's it. Now, right now. Thank you for joining us for progressive discussions. Um, of course, we are, like always, uncensored unrehearsed, totally ad lib, so anything can happen. We are and usually we are, does. We are, we are corporate and, hold on. It's a friggin' burner, that's what it is, a furnace. Uh, ca kerosene, right? Blower. Blower. Uh, Blowhard, like Chris Blow Christie. Uh, yeah, we're, we are corporate and FCC free. And totally uncensored and, and, and unpredictable. So, uh, and anything and everything could happen. And it, like Dr. Bill says, he usually does. Thank you and join us next week. I think this was the second or the third. Let me think. Progressive discussions of 2014. It so, Bird. yes. Oh, wait a minute. No, we, I, I, a week with Smith. The first week. We are now in the third week. Well, just, just look at the Saturdays and tell me. From the, the third. We missed one Saturday. Because of New Year's Day, right? Because of a storm. That's right, and I didn't. I, and I didn't. I wasn't here until the following week. So that's right. So this is number two. I say it's three. All right, whatever. Thank you anyway. Might be four. You know. You know what's really cool? eBay. Ebay or uh, Amazon or, or you know when you go to Google shopping and you, you know you you try to look for the lowest price and and of course you can find anything. What about deal bash? You can find anything oh, and everything. But you know what's the cool part is like let's say an item is from Ebay. The price is dirt cheap and the shipping is. Free, which I which I love. So it is now, huh? It is at dealdash.com. Deal dash. Okay. Deal dash. Not always, but a lot of the time, most often the shipping is free. But there's a big but there. If the item is coming from China, you have to wait a long time. Are you paying dirt cheap 
for it. Yeah, but it's supposed to be in some warehouse here in the U.S. Right. Well, maybe it is. It's just that things take a long time. You don't see things in a quick, timely fashion. Say so long to these people. So long, people. This has been a Mega Life 21 production. Hi, this is William Morrow. Are you one of those people who join a health club? And after they have your big overpriced annual membership, you notice that you're on your own with little or no results, even after all the promises? Then the website personal trainer is for you. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow III. So you well, lost, lost another argument, argument with the conservative. conservative. Right-wing right Republican. Republican. He, he talked, talked over you. He screamed he and yelled. He brought, he brought out, the out the Bible. He thumped it. it. He quoted he scripture, scripture to you. And you were lost, lost because, because you came, came at him with, with facts. facts. Nothing, Nothing but facts. facts. And, you and you expected, expected that that would, uh, that, that would make, make you look, you look good. good. That would make you win the argument, but it didn't. You know why you lost the argument? You know why you're going to lose your next argument? Because you don't read Censored. Censored, a 30-year-old newsletter that shows you how to defeat a conservative. Read Censored, and you'll have all the ammunition you need. Every time you get into an argument with the right-wing conservative uh, so-called Christian. Censored, that's all you need. Read it and defeat a conservative. Greetings, listeners. Let me speak to you for a moment about the foundation of our entire organization. Newsletter Censored. It was founded by, by our mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, in 1977. It discusses the five taboos of American life, politics, religion, health, human sexuality, and child rearing. You won't find anything like this in the mainstream media and the press. It reveals the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? We are living in the end times, so in order to defeat a conservative and save America, you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com Click on the printable order form page, and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. Hi, this is William Morrow. Are you one of those people who join a health club? And after they have your big overpriced annual membership, you notice that you're on your own with little or no results, even after all the promises. Then the website personal trainer is for you. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow III. So you lost another argument with a conservative, with a conservative right-wing, right-wing Republican. Republican. He, he talked, talked over you. you. He screamed he and yelled. yelled. He brought, he brought out, out the Bible. Bible. He thumped it. it. He quoted the scripture to you. You were lost because you came at him with facts. Nothing but facts. And you expected that that would, uh, that would make you look good. That would make you win the argument, but it didn't. You know why you lost the argument? You know why you're going to lose your next argument? Because you don't read censored. Censored, a 30-year-old newsletter that shows you how to defeat a conservative. Read censored. And you'll have all the ammunition you need. Every time you get into an argument with a right-wing conservative, uh, so-called Christian. Censored. That's all you need. Read it. And defeat a conservative. Greetings, listeners. Let me speak to you for a moment about the foundation of our entire organization. Newsletter Censored. It was found by our mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, in 1977. It discusses the five taboos of American life, politics, religion, health, human sexuality, and 
and child rearing. You won't find anything like this in the mainstream media and the press. It reveals the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? We are living in the end times, so in order to defeat a conservative and save America, you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com Click on the printable order form page and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription. This is James.